the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here with you on a Tuesday. A good show on tap for you. We're going to open up the phone lines, invite you to join in the conversation because uh, I think we're going to talk about a very, very important commission here in the state of Tennessee that pays attention to, I think, complaints when it goes along the lines of discrimination and how things are handled. And uh, as I think most of us would agree, there's been perhaps some progress on that front, but there's still a long way to go. And it's very important that I think states like Tennessee have human rights commissions. And we're going to talk about that today. And if nothing more today for many of you, if some of you weren't aware something like this existed. We'll try to explain what it's here for and why. And take some of your questions and calls as well, just to educate this morning about the role of uh, the Tennessee Human Rights Commission. Who better to talk about that but the uh, Executive Director Beverly Watts. Good morning. Good morning to you, ma'am. Thank you for coming on. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have you. All right, so I'm in the news biz. I've done a few stories with the commission, so I was aware of it. But I would venture to guess there may be some out there that weren't even or aren't even aware that this has been around since 1963 in Tennessee, correct? Correct. correct. When it was established, if you would, and I don't know if it's evolved and changed in some of its mission, but explain to the viewers what the commission does. All right. Initially, the commission was an advisory body to the governor, okay. and it was 1963. Governor Frank Clements was the governor at the time. Some people might remember his Face the Nation comments about race mm -hmm. and issues in America. Uh, and then there were a number of people around Nashville who said, we need to do something. And so he put together the Tennessee Human Relations Commission. That was our first name back in 1963. Ah. Advisory really on race relations. It was a 20-member body from across the state. I think, I can't remember how many was from each of the grand divisions mm -hmm. then. Over the years, we've changed. We, went, we became the Office of Human Development at some point, the Tennessee Office of Human Development. And then we became the Tennessee Human Rights Commission mm -hmm. in 1978. In <clears throat> 1978, we also have the distinction of having legislation that was created that gave us enforcement, pow enforcement powers. That meant we could receive, uh, investigate, uh, and initiate uh, administrative procedures on any complaints where we thought discrimination occurred. So it gave us the power to investigate claims of discrimination. While we did investigations from 1963 to 1978, they were very different in scope. Mm -hmm. We would go out, we'd talk to individuals. In 1978, we really had the authority, if we needed to, to subpoena documents, mm -hmm. to do other things, which we still have today. So we've been around doing a variety of things. And then in 1978, we expanded our jurisdiction to not just race, color, national origin, but also sex. sex. Also, uh, disability was added later on, uh, and then we also added um, age okay. and others. Uh, we have a agreements with, fed, with the federal government, both in housing and employment. And we do investigations in employment, housing, and public accommodations. And now we're responsible for making sure that the state of Tennessee, which receives federal financial assistance, assistance is in compliance with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, mm -hmm. which prohibits discrimination based on race, color, national origin. So for every federal dollar we receive, yeah. we're obligated to be in compliance with Title VI, and that occurred in 2009. Okay. Yeah. So we sort of keep evolving over the over the years. Well, I was going to mm -hmm. say. I mean, the next step in in Tennessee, the whole issue of gender equity and and sexuality. Mm -hmm. That's not part of it yet, is it? The Tennessee no. doesn't have a law for same-sex couples or the like. No. And uh, in 19 no, in, excuse me, <coughs> 2008 to somewhere around 2010. Tennessee passed a law that says that you can only be uh, treated the way you were on, that's listed on your birth certificate. Okay. So anything else is not, not done that way. Under Title VII, there is this notion of gender identity, yeah. uh, which means that Title VII covers, at least in some court jurisdictions, the notion of sexual orientation, transgender, and everything else. And there's a number of court cases under Title VII, which is enforced by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission at the federal level. Okay. Uh, at the Tennessee Human Rights Commission, we do have an agreement with the EEOC, as it's called, to investigate claims of discrimination, but our jurisdictions are a little bit different. 
for us in Tennessee, you must have eight or more employees for employment for us to receive. It has to be that large of a business. That and, large and usually, of a business. Usually mm -hmm. almost all your complaints come from with regard to employers, correct? No, we also do housing, housing? and we do oh. public accommodation. Okay. So let me tell you okay. about employment. In employment, we have eight, you have to have eight or more employees to file a complaint with the Tennessee Human Rights Commission under the Tennessee Human Rights Act. Eight or more. Okay. If you have 15 or more, we'll dual file the case, both under the state law and the federal law, because okay. we have an agreement to do that with the EEOC. Okay. We'll investigate the claims. Once the claims are investigated, we will send our report to the EEOC, and then or if we settle, and I'll talk about settlements in a minute, we'll do that and we'll send it to the EEOC and they will accept our findings or if there's an issue they might ask mm -hmm. us to come back and do some additional investigation. Uh, last year we got about 7,000 calls and these are all, empl all employment calls, 7,000 about employment for the most part. We have 10% is probably housing. Mm -hmm. But 7,000. And they may say, well, I was fired yesterday, and I was fired because I'm 65. I was fired because I'm 55. Mm. I was fired because I'm a female 55 and black, or just f female and 55. Any of those elements mm -hmm. would work. So we would do that. We'd take it in if it was jurisdictional. We'd look to see. And it has to be filed with us within six months or 180 days of the incident. Or the so statute of limitations. Statute there. of limitations. Okay. So the incident occurs today, so you have six months from today to file to with file. us. EEOC has a statute of 300 days because we exist as what we call a fair employment practices agency in the state. So within 300 days, we could do the intake, but we couldn't do the investigation. We'd have to refer it to the EEOC. When you uh, get the complaints, and you say you're busy, you get a lot of them. Let's talk about the employment mm -hmm. ones mm -hmm. for a moment here. Um, all right, people get fired for a lot of reasons, mm -hmm. okay? Some people who are older, or some people who are possible gender, are fired because all of a sudden they become crappy at their job and they deserve to get fired, okay? Not just That's old it. people, then. Okay, no, no, not just old, <laughs> I'm just saying, but, there, but the, what I'm but, saying yes, is those people might call and say, well, I was fired because I was old. Right. And then there will be others that maybe for whatever reason mm -hmm. are still doing a good job and, and they're fired because maybe someone just deems them as being too old, which in my mm -hmm. mind is mm -hmm. clearly unfair. Right. But if you're no longer doing the job and you can't do it well, mm -hmm. because maybe you've aged, right. I don't see a problem with you getting fired. Am I wrong about that? I'm just, my, my concern is if you can do the job, I don't care what you look like or what your age is, you should be left alone and be able to do your job. The moment you start not being able to do your job mm -hmm. up to snuff is when I think an employer has a right to fire you. Is that wrong? Well, employers can fire you if you're not performing, period. Right. All that's right. my point. So that's, that's where you guys have to sift through. When mm -hmm. someone files right. a complaint, mm -hmm. it may be a legitimate complaint that they were fired inappropriately because of their age, right. which is wrong. Or how do, you, how do you guys figure that out? I mean, the employer's <laughs> going to say, well, look, you know, I'll show you the performance. We have a file here that shows mm -hmm. where things weren't up to snuff. And this employer, is that what you look at to see? Is there a right. pattern? Mm -hmm. What we'll do is we'll take all the information from the complaining party. Okay. And then we'll say, okay, what's the company? We'll notify the company, and if it meets jurisdiction, eight or more employees within six months, uh, is one of the one of one of the issues that we'll look at. Whether it's race, color, national origin, age, gender, sure. disability, uh, it meets everything. Then we will we will file the complaint on behalf of the complaining party. Right. We are independent fact finders, so our job is not to be the advocate for either the employer or the employee, but to sift through, as you said, those facts and issues that we find. Mm -hmm. So once we do that, we'll send a letter to the employer and we'll say, we've got this complaint. Okay. It's from so-and-so, so-and-so who used to work for you. And everything is confidential. We don't give names of the employee or the uh, company okay. at any time unless we find discrimination. Gotcha. So we'll do that. We'll send the letter and we'll ask them to send certain records. And if they said they were fired, or they fail to get a promotion, we'll ask for records around that. Mm -hmm. And if they said it was age, we'll want to know how, who, what the ages of the individuals were who were fired. Mm -hmm. And we may ask for a lot of demographics, but generally we keep it pretty, 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 pretty narrow to the okay. scope of the complaint, unless we find there's reason to expand it. Right, gotcha. Uh, so we'll look at that, we'll look at the issues, we'll interview witnesses from both the complaining party and the respondent. And the respondent, we always ask them, who else might know about this in the company? Did you tell anybody? Usually if something bad happens to us, we usually tell our friends, family, or whatever when it happens. 
they, you know, they say certain things about old people in the company all the time. Yeah, you and hear that. And once it starts, yeah. they tell you start telling people that. Yeah. And sometimes other people hear it inside the company. Sometimes they don't. So we we might interview those witnesses if we know about them. Would you say it is? Difficult or with the proper documentation and the experience of your investigators, is it you know pretty straightforward to determine whether or not there's been an act of discrimination? Sometimes it can be pretty difficult can because uh, we find that people are not happy when they come to us. It's, sure. Even if they lost, no one likes to lose their job. No, no one right. likes to lose their job. But even if they didn't get that promotion, <clears throat> this is their money, or so they think. This is their livelihood. So what should they do? Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of different things. So they didn't get the training that would put them in 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 position to get the promotion. Someone else got it because oh they play, they go out and they go to go to mm -hmm. go to games together their kids their kids are in school together they go to picnics together but I don't get to go so I don't get the first-hand mm -hmm. knowledge of things so it's a lot of different things sure but what we'll find out when we start looking at information is a complaining party let's let's go with the proactive side complaining party has a great record they have great evaluations they've never had any issues that's what we see. So we'll start talking to witnesses. We'll ask their witnesses, well, what kind of employee are they? Oh, they're a great employee, always here, always did whatever, always went above and beyond. We don't know why they fired them or why they mm -hmm. were released. Mm -hmm. Usually that's the term, why they were released from their job. Then we'll ask the employer, tell us what's your policy with respect to releasing employees or laying people off or firing employees? Mm -hmm. And we, we will probably do all of them because we never know what we'll encounter. And we'll get the policies and we'll say, okay, how many people over the last year have you fired or released mm -hmm. Or laid off. Or laid off. And laid off can be a different thing. Sometimes you can yeah. be very good at your job, mm -hmm. but a company just has to make layoffs. But then you look at that, too. There can be discrimination mm -hmm. in that. Exactly. Say, well, we're going to lay off people. We have to do it. Everyone did well, but you know what? We're just going to lay off the black employees. Well, yeah. that would be racist. Mm -hmm. Or we're just going to lay off the ones that are, you know, over 60. Right. Yeah. Or, or over 55. Or, you know, those women, they have they have children. They've been in and out. And they're okay, uh, but we'll lay them off, too. So yeah, you get these kind of things. Now, Human Resources generally has policies and procedures, so we'll always look at that. We always talk to the HR people. We talk to the manager in at the company, sometimes with the company's attorney. Yeah. And, and then we will also talk to their witnesses, the managers, other managers who knew the person that may have worked for them. Some people have been in companies a long time, so they move from unit to unit sure. or, uh, and stuff, so we'll talk to them. Once we do all of that, we sort of look at it and see, okay, what's going on? We'll go back to the complaining party to say, look, we've looked at all of the details in this there's a couple of more questions we need to ask you all right let's take a break on that because mm -hmm. uh, that's fascinating to me about how it goes on behind the scenes and then mm -hmm. I want to talk about what kind of enforcement and obviously there can be lawsuits that spend, mm -hmm. stem from this kind of stuff people hire lawyers as well we'll take a break when we come back if you have a question or a comment it's pretty broad-based I mean Tennessee Human Rights Commission working to eradicate discrimination at the various you know venues that she just talked about. 737-7587 is the number. If you're on hold, stay there. We can take some of your calls, even if maybe you're facing a situation like that and have a question. We'll be back with the executive director right after this.